One minute ago, a network of fresh fractures ripped open beneath Campi Flegre, Italy's sleeping supervolcano, triggering seismic signals the world has never recorded here before. Half a million people stand in the red zone as mysterious underground forces build unstoppable pressure. Is this the final warning before an eruption that could threaten all of Europe? Or the last desperate release of a doomed system? The answer starts with the anomaly the experts can't explain. Inside the National Seismic Alert Room, alarms blared just after midnight. The automated detection grid had flagged a cluster of seismic anomalies, signals so intense and unfamiliar they bypassed routine filters. Duty seismologists jolted from their desks, watched as the system mapped the epicenter, deep under Pozzuoli, right in the heart of Campi Flegre's red zone. Within minutes, the data stream escalated. Magnitude spiked above 4.0 and the frequency of microquakes exceeded 100 in a single hour. On-call officers scrambled to verify the readings, cross-checking against historic patterns. None matched. The resonance, the waveform, even the event depth, everything pointed to something new tearing through the crust. Protocol demanded immediate escalation. The director of the Osservatorio Vesuviano was called before dawn. By 2 a.m., the Italian Civil Protection Department received a direct alert. Emergency lines connected city officials, police, and hospital administrators across Naples. The first bulletin, time-stamped and urgent, warned of ongoing ground deformation and possible fresh fractures. As the city slept, a chain reaction unfolded. Mobile monitoring teams were dispatched to the caldera rim. Crisis coordinators opened the yellow room for round-the-clock response. Local and local authorities began reviewing evacuation logistics for more than 500,000 people. Seismologists worked in shifts, tracking the swarm's expansion and feeding updates to senior volcanologists. Every spike on the screen was a new decision point, whether to hold, escalate, or trigger public warnings. Field teams fanned out at sunrise, searching for visible cracks and collecting soil samples from steaming vents. Each data point was immediately relayed back to headquarters. For the scientists on duty, the pressure was relentless. The next alert could mean anything. A lull, another swarm, or the first signs of a rupture that could change Southern Italy forever. At the edge of the caldera, a team from the GFZ German Research Center for Geosciences set up portable seismometers, searching for the source of the deep, pulsing tremors. Their recorders captured a signature unlike anything logged in decades of Campi Flegrei monitoring. A very long period signal, lasting nearly two minutes, repeating in irregular bursts. The dominant frequency hovered at 0.11 Hertz, far below the range of ordinary earthquakes or even typical volcanic tremor. Each pulse arrived with a slow, swelling onset then faded into a tale of low, resonant vibration. Analysts at the European Seismic Lab pored over the data, comparing it to catalogs from Etna, Arenal, and Yellowstone. The waveform was unmistakable, a slow oscillation, as if something enormous was vibrating within the crust itself. The duration, between 60 and 120 seconds, hinted at a massive, fluid-filled structure beneath the surface. Not a simple crack, but a broad, elongated cavity. These VLP signals, as the scientists called them, often meant that pressurized fluids, or gases, were moving through deep fractures, causing the rock to resonate like a giant buried bell. Every new event was mapped against the evolving seismic swarm, and the timing lined up with the most intense microquake clusters. Modeling suggested the resonance was coming from a fracture nearly a kilometer long, filled with superheated gas and water, connecting the deep magma reservoir to the surface vents. Small changes in crack width or fluid pressure could shift the frequency or amplitude, turning the entire system into a sensitive indicator of subsurface movement. For the GFZ team, the implications were immediate. 
the unusual resonance meant the fracture system was not only active, but possibly expanding or changing shape. The signals hinted at a dynamic, unstable pathway, one that could either vent pressure harmlessly or become the main conduit for an eruption. The only way to know for sure was to map the physical structure in real time before the next pulse changed everything. People have built lives atop Campy Flay Gray's restless ground for centuries. In the heart of Pozzuoli, families pass down stories of the earth rumbling beneath their feet, a legacy as old as the city itself. The caldera is not just a geological feature, it's home to more than half a million people, their schools, markets, and memories layered above a supervolcano. Local historians at the Vesuvius Observatory have spent decades tracing the region's uneasy partnership with its volcanic roots. Their archives hold records of the last eruption in 1538, when Monte Nuovo rose from farmland in just a week. Chroniclers described ash darkening the sky, houses swallowed by new hills, and entire neighborhoods forced to flee with only what they could carry. That eruption was brief, but its scars remain visible across the landscape. Today, the population at risk is hundreds of times greater. Census data puts more than 500,000 people inside the official red zone, one of the highest concentrations of volcanic danger anywhere in the world. The city of Naples, just a few kilometers away, sits on the edge of the hazard map. For residents, the threat is not an abstract calculation. Ground cracks appear in courtyards, sulfur smells drift through open windows, and the sound of distant tremors interrupts daily life. In interviews, longtime residents recall the Brady Seismic Crisis of the early 1980s, when months of ground swelling forced evacuations and left entire districts abandoned for years. Some never returned. Yet despite centuries of warning signs, people remain. The caldera's fertile soils and the pull of Naples' economy have always drawn families back. Historians point to the resilience of these communities, but also to the risks of normalizing danger. With every new fracture, the question grows more urgent. How many are willing or able to leave if the next eruption begins? The answer will shape not just the fate of Pozzuoli, but the future of everyone living in the shadow of Campi Flegre. Contracted geophysical crews arrived before dawn, hauling ground-penetrating radar units and seismic imaging gear into the narrow streets of Pozzuoli. Their task was to scan beneath the city's foundations for any sign of new structural weakness. These engineers worked in tight formation, laying out grid patterns that traced the suspected fault lines identified by the overnight seismic swarm. Each pass of the radar antenna sent pulses deep into the volcanic earth, measuring reflections from layers of rock and buried voids. The raw data, relayed instantly to laptops in the mobile lab, revealed a series of anomalies, zones where the subsurface returned signals inconsistent with undisturbed ground. Initial models suggested more than surface cracks. The radar's cross-sections showed elongated low-density corridors plunging well below the urban crust. Some of these features extended past three kilometers in depth, far deeper than the shallow fractures mapped during previous episodes of unrest. Engineers flagged several of these fractures for further analysis. Noting their orientation, they ran from the caldera's central uplift zone toward the Solfatara and Pichiarelli fumarole fields. This geometry raised immediate concern among the survey chiefs. In volcanic terrains, such fracture networks often serve as conduits for pressurized fluids and gases, connecting deep reservoirs to surface vents. The team's lead geophysicist, coordinating with the INGV's remote sensing division, cross-referenced the radar profiles with recent micro-seismic activity. The match was uncanny. The most active quake clusters lined up directly above the deepest, widest fractures. Further processing of the radar data revealed branching patterns, secondary cracks splitting off the main corridors, some angling toward residential neighborhoods and critical infrastructure. These were not the hairline fissures of routine ground settlement. Their width, in places exceeding half a meter, and their abrupt propagation through older rock layers suggested a forceful, ongoing intrusion below. 
In the field command van, engineers debated the implications. The presence of such deep, open fractures beneath Pozzuoli meant that the barrier between the magma hydrothermal system and the city's surface had thinned. Any additional pressure surge from below could exploit these pathways, allowing superheated water or gas to escape rapidly. The risk was not limited to explosive eruption. Even without magma reaching the surface, a sudden release of volatile fluids could trigger phreatic blasts or toxic gas events. The survey's findings were relayed to the Crisis Coordination Center in real time. Maps marked with fresh fracture lines were uploaded to the Central Hazard Assessment Portal, prompting immediate calls for denser sensor deployment around the most critical zones. The data left little doubt. The subsurface beneath Pozzuoli was no longer a static shield, but a dynamic, fractured gateway. For the engineers on the ground, every new scan was a reminder that the city's safety now depended on the invisible patterns hidden beneath their feet. Sensors across Campi Flegre lit up with readings that defied expectations. GNSS analysts at the Vesuvius Observatory watched the ground's vertical motion accelerate past all prior records. Since 2005, the caldera floor had lifted 1.4 meters, but in the last few weeks, the rate jumped sharply, more than doubling the monthly average. The ground beneath Pozzuoli rose by over 30 millimeters in a single week, matching the pace seen only during the final days before the 1984 Brady Seismic Crisis. Seismic data poured in, each new quake mapped in real time. Then, at 3.17 a.m., the network registered a magnitude 4.6 earthquake, the strongest in decades. Its epicenter sat just two kilometers below the city in a zone already riddled with fractures. The jolt triggered a cascade of aftershocks, pushing the microquake count beyond 212 hours. For the scientists on duty, the numbers alone told a story of runaway instability. Gravity meters deployed across the caldera began to register subtle but persistent drops in local gravity, signals that, to the trained eye, suggested the movement of fluids or magma at depth. But the anomalies weren't uniform. Certain sectors mapped as silent zones showed a puzzling absence of expected signals. Where ground should have compressed and rebounded, the data flatlined. For the GNSS team, these silent patches hinted at pockets of molten rock or gas accumulating out of sight, masked beneath layers of brittle crust. Geochemists joined the crisis call, relaying results from the latest gas and soil samples. At the Pichirelli fumarole, the CO2 flux surged past 5,000 tons per day, more than double the baseline from a decade earlier. The ratio of CO2 to SO2 spiked to levels rarely seen outside pre-eruptive phases. In the mobile lab, a technician flagged an abnormal trace of helium, a possible marker of fresh magma degassing at shallow depth. The patterns were erratic, but the trend was clear. The caldera's volatile system was growing more unstable by the hour. As the data streams converged, questions multiplied. Was the ground swelling from a shallow magma pulse, or was steam pressure forcing its way through the fractured crust, the silent zones on the gravity map, the deformation spike, the chemical signatures, each pointed to a system under extraordinary stress. For the analysts at the observatory, the crisis was no longer theoretical. Every metric was in overdrive, and the window for action was shrinking fast. Inside the command center, the mood shifted from cautious concern to outright urgency. The director ordered emergency deployment of new monitoring stations around the most active fractures. Field teams scrambled to set up portable GNSS and gas sensors, racing to fill the gaps in coverage before the next seismic burst. In the labs, geochemists prepared for round-the-clock analysis, knowing that the next anomaly could mean the difference between warning and disaster. The data had spoken. Campi Flegre was careening toward a threshold no one could yet define. University scientists pressed for immediate expansion of the sensor grid, 
warning that existing coverage left dangerous blind spots around the new fracture zones. By midday, field crews from the Vesuvius Observatory and University of Naples were hauling portable GNSS units, gas analyzers, and broadband seismometers into Pozzuoli's most unstable districts. The first wave of new stations went live within hours, streaming raw data straight to the crisis room. But as the network grew, so did the debate over resources. Officials from the Civil Protection Department questioned the cost of deploying dozens of high-end sensors on short notice, while researchers argued that every minute lost meant another gap in the warning system. Live feeds tracked installation progress, with university teams providing updates and pushing for more funding. In the background, the scramble to outpace the next seismic burst became a contest between scientific urgency and bureaucratic caution. Yellow alert status swept across the city before sunrise. In the narrow streets of Pozzuoli, civil protection officers moved door to door, urging residents to review evacuation routes and gather essentials. The sharp smell of sulfur drifted through open windows, a warning carried on the morning air. Families packed bags with documents and medicine, children clutching favorite toys as parents scanned official updates on their phones. Schools suspended classes, and church bells rang out. Not for mass, but as a signal to prepare. Anxiety grew with every aftershock. In public squares, volunteers handed out masks and bottled water, while city buses idled near designated shelters. The memory of past crises lingered in every conversation, but this time, uncertainty pressed harder. For many, the question was no longer if they should leave, but how soon they might have to go. USGS volcanologists, now stationed alongside Italian teams, are watching Campi Flegre with mounting concern. Unlike Etna or Vesuvius, this is not just a local hazard. The last time the caldera unleashed its full force, 39,000 years ago, ash clouds darkened skies across Europe, cooling the climate and reshaping entire ecosystems. Recent modeling shows that an eruption on that scale could send ash as far as London and Berlin, grounding flights, choking rivers, and disrupting power grids. Scientists warn that the next 48 hours are critical. The fracture network beneath Pozzuoli is evolving faster than any previous crisis on record. Sensors are feeding live data to monitoring centers around the world, but even the most advanced models struggle to predict what comes next. For now, the world waits, knowing that what happens beneath Naples could ripple across continents. Since 2005, the Campi Flegre caldera has risen more than 1.4 meters, an unprecedented pace confirmed by GNSS and ground-penetrating radar surveys. In the last 24 hours, a new network of deep fractures beneath Pozzuoli was mapped, and sensor data recorded seismic signals not seen in any previous unrest cycle. Laboratory analysis shows abnormal volcanic gas ratios, with elevated carbon dioxide emissions pointing to magma rising closer to the surface. These facts echo the pattern seen before the 1538 Monte Nuovo eruption and recall the catastrophic caldera forming event 39,000 years ago. Yet despite expanded monitoring and a yellow alert, scientists cannot say whether these fractures will safely release pressure or trigger a major eruption. With half a million people in the immediate red zone and evacuation plans under review, the threat is no longer theoretical. For now, the only certainty is that Campi Flegre remains under 24-hour watch, its next move still hidden deep below the surface.